There is growing concern in this country and fear about deadly attacks against transgender Americans, particularly trans women of color. As Amna Nawaz tells us, a series of murders in different cities in just one week has underscored a larger pattern of violence over several years. And yet it comes at a time when trans celebrities are more accepted and more prominent in pop culture. Judy, the most recent killing took place last Sunday in North Philadelphia. Michelle Tamika Washington, 40 years old and a longtime advocate for the LGBTQ community, was shot several times. Her death came one day after Malaysia Booker was found dead in Dallas. Booker was just 23, and just weeks before her death, she was attacked in a mob-like beating after a minor traffic accident. One week before those murders, 21-year-old Claire Legato was shot in the head in Cleveland. She was killed after an argument between her mother and the suspected shooter. Earlier this year, two more black transgender women, Ashanti Carmen and Dana Martin, were also killed. Last year, more than two dozen transgender people were killed. And according to a 2018 Human Rights Campaign report, there were at least 128 trans people killed in 32 states since 2013. Eighty percent of them were people of color. Let's now take a closer look with Beverly Tillery. She's executive director of the Anti-Violence Project, an LGBTQ anti-violence organization. Beverly, welcome to the News Hour. Thank you for being with us. I want to start by asking you about this recent spate of killings. They happened across the country. The circumstances are all very different in each case. Do you know or believe that these women were targeted because they were transgender? You know, I don't know all of the specifics of each of these um, murders, but what we know is, as you really just um, showed already, that we are seeing um, a tremendous number of homicides of trans women of color um, over and over for the past several years. This has been consistent, and we need to pay attention um, as a society. This is... Um, something that's happening to our community members um, who are constantly under threat, um, experiencing other kinds of hate violence um, in our society. And we need to step up and come together and really do something to stop it. Beverly, your organization tracks the numbers. You've been tracking them for 20 years. When you look at the numbers right. as we know them this year, as compared to last, there appears to be a reduction in the violence. Do you trust those numbers? Well, what we always say is that even what we report, we know is an underreporting of the violence that's happening and the homicides that's happening. Um, a number of homicides, and of course, we can't tell you how many don't ever get reported um, for a number of reasons. Um, in some cases, we know that trans and gender nonconforming folks are misgendered um, by the police. Um, they may not have community members who, and friends and family members who will step up and say, this is who this person really was. Um, and we just know that a lot of this goes under the radar, unfortunately. Um, really, we shouldn't get into a game of trying to compare this year to last year, when did the homicides happen? You know, it really doesn't matter. Um, this is a huge crisis, and we have to take action now. Um, we, we've known about this for, for years now, and um, we should have taken action last year and the year before, um, but it's not too late now. Let's talk about the action we have seen in Dallas alone, right? There were three brutal attacks in the last several months, two of them fatal. Yes. The mayor came out and said, you know, this is, un, this is unacceptable. He called it a mob violence, the attack against uh, Malaysia Booker. What have you seen from law enforcement in the way of a response? Are, are you satisfied with what you're seeing? Well, we're not satisfied. Um, we don't necessarily see a response that is saying this is this is more than just a trend. Um, this is an epidemic in our society that needs to be addressed and taken seriously. Um, and frankly, 
you know, more and more community members are reluctant to turn to law enforcement because members of the trans and gender nonconforming community and, in fact, members of the LGBT community um, have experienced violence um, from the police. They don't trust the police. Beverly, it's worth noting we're speaking on the same day the Trump administration has rolled back some health care protections for trans people. Earlier this week, there was another rule they put into place allowing shelters receiving federal funds to turn away trans people serving, uh, seeking services there. There's also the, the effort to push a transgender military ban here. What effect have all of these, even just proposals, had on the trans community? Yeah. I mean, talk about a complete slap in the face. Um, you know, the timing is really um, important to note here because on the heels of these homicides where the community is already reeling, um, for the administration to, one after the other, release these proposed guidelines and rules this week, um, it's clear that they do not care about the trans and gender nonconforming community. And in fact, um, in the work that we've been doing in the city of New York and across the country, when we've brought together trans and gender nonconforming folks to talk about what are ways that we need our um, cities and our states and the nation to respond to this violence and to help prevent violence, people over and over again have told us we need housing. We need access to employment. Um, we need better health care so that we can put ourselves in safer circumstances and so we're not as vulnerable to violence that's happening in our community. And what does the administration do? Seek to strip away access to health care, to housing, um, to, to, um, to employment. You know, all of the things that people have actually articulated that they need to address the violence, the administration is trying to take away. Beverly Tillery, executive director of the Anti-Violence Project, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me.